Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about engine harnesses. Now, before we go over any of the new harnesses that are available on the marketplace, I want to go over a topic that I get asked from you guys quite often, which is what engine harness am I supposed to use for my swap? Now, this topic has been covered extensively on all the old car forums already. Highly recommend you guys check those out if you guys need some more information. But the engine harness that you're supposed to be using for your swap is the original engine harness that came with your car. Whether you are an EF, EG, EK, DA, DC, you use the original engine harness that came with the car, modify for any of the differences that you need for your new engine, and then you drop in your motor. Now, the reason why you would do that is everything is already plug and play for your chassis and your engine. You do not want to modify this section. All you want to do is just plug the harness into your engine and drop it in. Now, the plugs itself all are pretty much the same for whether you're a D series, B series, H series, F series, all the sensor plugs all plug in with the exception of a couple or a few different sensors. All you really have to do for those is you cut them and wire in the new kind of plug for them. And that's about it. So I get it. Some of you guys probably purchase a, a vehicle that doesn't have an engine or an engine harness. Now, what do you do in those cases? Now I would recommend you guys source out either used or brand new a harness that matches your chassis then. And then you modify for any of those changes to your new motor and then you drop it in. So again, use the original engine harness that comes with your car. So I hope that covers up that those questions. Um, basically, yeah, use your original engine harness. That's the easiest way to do your swap. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, I wanna talk about new engine harnesses that are currently available in the marketplace. Now, if you guys are looking for a new engine harness, you know the reputable guys out there like Rywire, CJ Squiring, uh, Jack Spania, Kieran Top Racing, all these guys make and sell new harnesses for Hondas. Now, they are probably very good quality and they look really good, but they're very expensive. Even the most budget version of their harnesses costs as much as an engine swap would cost, just to give you guys a little bit of perspective. Now, the one thing that's cool about their harnesses is that every single one of these vendors share the same design. The harnesses all go to ECU plugs and then there's an individual miscellaneous plug. So how these harnesses work is that that miscellaneous plug plugs to another harness that you have to buy, which is a chassis specific harness. So that chassis specific harness is specific to the vehicle that you're driving. So for example, my EF, I'll need an EF specific harness. So that plugs into that miscellaneous plug. The other end goes to some plugs in your car and that virtually gets the harness to work with your engine and your car. So over the last couple of years, I've noticed that there's a, been an influx of new sellers on the marketplace selling these harnesses from China. Now I'm assuming these reputable sellers ended up outsourcing their harnesses to China and then China ended up making them and selling them. Now you can purchase these harnesses for a fraction of the price from China. I've gone ahead and actually purchased one of these harnesses and that's the thing that we're gonna be going over today. Now. This harness here was purchased from China. And if you look at it, we'll go up close later and I'll show you guys how it looks like, but it's pretty good quality. Now, one of the things you have to be really weary of is the wiring isn't always gonna be correct because the quality control in China isn't the best, as you guys know. Now, I've gone through this whole harness and checked every single wire on the harness. And I did find some mistakes. So I have since fixed them on this harness. So this harness should be good, but the only thing that's a downside for the China harnesses is that they do not sell the chassis specific harnesses. So you have to either buy it from the reputable guys still, or you have to make your own. And if you buy from the reputable guys, they may not plug in and work exactly because the pinout for this harness versus whatever they built their harnesses on may be a little bit different because the positioning of the pin could be anywhere. It's not really specific, right? So. In today's video, we're actually going to be making our own chassis specific harness. Now, I'm not going to go into full, full detail on every single wire because like I said, every harness is going to be different. I'm just going to show you guys the gist of how to make a harness. Now, just to give you guys an idea of how much all this cost me, this harness plus the chassis specific harness materials cost me about $200 Canadian, which is about $150 US. Now, the most budget harness from Rywire is about $500 US. That gives you guys a little bit of a perspective of how much cheaper one of these harnesses is. And this is actually very good quality. 
Now, without me, there's enough of me talking, let's get a, go ahead and start making the chassis specific harness. All right, so here is the actual China harness that I've uh, purchased. So as you can see, the quality of everything actually looks really good. Like I said, I did have to de-pin and actually re-pin and rewire some stuff, but that's okay. As long as you know you're wiring, you're good, right? So, um, yeah, it's kind of all tangled up. But as you can see, all these are the, the plug sensors and everything. They're all labeled, um, and it goes to all these, these ECU plugs and this miscellaneous plug. So this is the harness. It actually looks very good, uh, but we'll only know how this works once we put it in the car, right? Um, but for the time being, we're just gonna make the chassis specific harness so that we can actually use it in the car. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually, I've located the alternator wire. So this is an OBD2 harness with the OBD1 ECU connectors. So I've located the alternator plug. This goes to a OBD2 alternator. Um, from the US, the Canadian ones are actually three wire. They actually do have three wires on here, but the US ones is a four wire plug. So they are a little different. I'm going to be rewiring this, like cutting it and wiring up a OBD0, OBD1 kind of style plug because I'm going to be running those kind of alternators. Now I'll show you guys what the actual um, OBD0, OBD1 plug looks like. All right, so this is the plug here. Um, as you can see, they, it's a circle plug. Now, there's, like I said, only three wires on here. One of the wires, I believe, is the control wire, uh, which isn't necessarily needed. You don't need it. You, could only, you only need to run the uh, ignition and FR and the light one. So those are the three wires. So we're going to cut this and we're going to wire it to this. There we go. This harn this connector is now fully connected. So the other wire that we have to rewire later is probably the IAT sensor wire. So this thing, this is the old style IAT. Now I have the uh, OBD2 one in my car right now, like the one that goes into intake. So this one, I think we all have, we have to do is de-pin this and, re and just plug in the pins into the connector. I'm gonna try and look through my old OBD2 harness to see if I have another connector that I could use so I don't have to de-pin the one that's currently in the car but yeah this is another one that we have to de-pin later. Now we're going to make the chassis specific harness. The chassis specific harness essentially plugs into this plug here. All right so it looks like the camera wasn't actually rolling but I've already kind of started this. Um, what I've been doing is just cutting wire at this length and I've been pinning them in. So this will go to two connectors, which is this one and this one. Um, so I'm gonna probably loom it first, and then the rest of the wires actually go to, I believe this and this, these two. So this is a 3D printed connector because I couldn't actually locate um, an ECU connector. I mean, technically I don't need it, but it's it's okay. I, had, I, I 3D printed one and it fits perfectly fine. And then there's another ECU one here. So these are all the connectors that we're gonna be using, including this one. All right guys, the harness is actually fully complete now. Unfortunately, I didn't actually record the whole process. For some reason, the camera just was not recording. But this is the harness. I've actually fully assembled it. Um, for the most part, most people could just run it like this. Um, for me, um, I need to add one more wire to this because I wanna keep the EVAP system in the car. So I will need to bridge one wire from here to the uh, harness here. So what I'm gonna do is just have the wire coming out of this connector and then um, pin a wire here and then 
bullet connect them um, so that I could always disconnect the, the harness if I ever wanted to. Now this is the harness here. Unfortunately, since I don't have the footage of me actually fully assembling it, or at least most of the footage, I'll just go over what I've done. So essentially this connector is connected to this here. So that's the whole thing. You wanna bridge these two. So now this just clips in like so. And then these connectors, clip into the car. These two to the ECU. These two are the spare wires. As you can see, extra here. They're the spare wires that are left over. You can hook up to anything like a gauge or whatever, just like how rye wires have set up. And then these two plug into the uh, two connectors on the firewall side. So that will completely assemble the harness. So this stuff connects to the engine and the ECU. This side connects to the vehicle and then everything should run as is. So I did notice a couple things that we do have to fix on here. One is um, there is a harness connector for the reverse lights on here. And you, we know that the reverse lights on an EF are bullet connected. So I'll have to cut the connector off of this harness and then put some bullet connectors on there so that I could just plug them into the reverse lights. Um, the other thing, like I mentioned earlier in the video is the, um, IAT intake air temperature sensor, which I'll have to also deep pin and pin a new, uh, plug to, but it kind of looks like the, um, the plug for the reverse lights looked like the plug for the, um, that sensor, the IAT sensor. So I could technically deep pin it and take it from there. Uh, I just have to find it. Yeah. So reverse light here. So this actually kind of looks like the connector for the um, IAT sensor. So I may be able to just deep pin this. I'll just double check it first. If it does look exactly the same, I can just deep pin this and then change it over to the actual IAT, which is this one right here. So I'll basically just swap these two connectors uh, and then we should be good for OBD2. All right, so in my stash of connectors, I did find one that would work for this sensor here. So this plugs right in. I already removed the inside thing. That, that thing takes a while to remove. So this clips right in like so, and then we could undo it. So I'm gonna de-pin these and then see if I could pin, um, where is it, the IAT one in there. All right, another thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need one of these cables uh, for going from, the, I believe, the fuse box to the alternator. Um, so I had one of these lying around, so I didn't have to pull the one from my original harness. But if you don't have one, you're gonna have to pull it from your original harness, or you you could make one. Uh, so since I already have one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this right up and then I'm going to um, loom it up with the same kind of wire loom as this. And then uh, it'll look all nice and neat and ready to put in the car. Alright guys, so we've talked about how expensive new engine harnesses are uh, from the reputable sellers out there. This here is a good option if you guys are on a budget and want to save some money and are good with wiring. Um, so in today's video, what we've done here is we've uh, built our own chassis harness. Uh, this basically plugs into this harness and into the vehicle, adapting this harness to the vehicle. We've also made modifications to the China harness to apply to my applications. Um, and now we're basically all set for installing in the car. And this all cost me about $200 Canadian or about $150 US. I think I'd choose this option over paying about $500 US from a reputable seller any day. Anyways, guys, I hope this video helps you guys out. If you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe, and share my videos. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.